So I visited a Mormon temple. Now, for anyone who knows me, they know I am not Mormon. I do not associate with the Church of Latter-day Saints, and throughout this video I'll try to refer to them, uh, to the people of the Congregation of Church of Latter-day Saints as LDS members and so forth, because when I spoke with James, who was my uh, a resident um, LDS member who showed me around the temple and helped give me some insight on what was going on that I was looking at, um, he did say they're kind of more moving away from that term because they want to be um, associated with Jesus, not with Mormon. So that is, uh, that's how I'm going to try to refer to him throughout this video. Anyone, as I said, anyone who knows me knows that I do not associate with the Church of Latter-day Saints. I am not a member of the um, Church of Latter-day Saints. And I prescribe to a form of evangelical Anabaptist root, sort of, of where I associate when it comes to Christianity. However, I am intrigued by philosophy, religion, and other people's beliefs. There's a reason why I do an entire podcast called Like the World, where I explore philosophy, beliefs, and controversial issues because um, someone's got to do it. We got to, the only way we can come closer together and uh, grow a better social bond and a better social fabric is by understanding other cultures. So I hope to keep doing stuff like this where I visit mosques or I visit temples and I visit other religious buildings and just learn more and I'll share as much as I can with you guys as we, uh, as we go on with this Like the World journey. Um, so this video, I'm going to just kind of give you my insight that I got from my friend uh, who showed me around the temple. And I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of my reaction, my reviews, and kind of help explain things. I have some video footage from outside the temple and from when I woke up that morning and um, when I left and stuff like that, that I will put in here um, throughout the video, intermittently at least. And I'm just going to kind of give you my thoughts, my reaction was going through my head, and kind of give you an overview of what you're looking at. Um, but you weren't allowed to um, bring any video, you weren't allowed to take videos or photos inside the temple. Um, you were you were not allowed to do that, they, they did not want you to do that. So I was unable to capture any footage inside, but I did capture any footage outside. And they have their, on their website, they actually have footage, so they have videos and um, photos of the interior of the DC temple. And so if you, I will link that down below if you want to look at those on your own time, but I will be uh, showing them, showing the pictures on my screen and just kind of give you an insight on what you're looking at and what I kind of learned from James, my friend, who is part of the Latter-day Saints Church. And so definitely um, join me with this journey as we go through here and we'll jump in it soon. Just, I just ask that if you enjoy what you hear today, if you enjoy what you see, subscribe, follow along, and you can check out my content at ltworld.info. So let's jump into it. Let's start looking at this DC temple. Good morning, everyone. It's about a little past 5.30, but I'm about to be heading out to the meetup spot to meet up with my friends and coworkers and stuff and go to visit the Mormon temple in DC. So see you guys when I get there, I guess. Well, it's six roughly, and now I'm at the meeting point. So now I'm actually technically officially heading out to DC. Let's do this. So after you get to see my lovely sleepyhead me early in the morning at like, what was that, 5 a.m. or something, um, you get to see a little walkway that leads into the LDS temple in D.C. Um, and again, if you want to, I mean, I don't know, I forget when, when this temple gets consecrated, it will no longer be able to be visited by anyone but LDS members. So I'm not sure when that ends, I forget. Um, I will definitely, when, when I edit this video, I'll probably just drop the date in there for you to see. But you will not be able to visit this for long. So if it's still available for visit, I would definitely recommend visiting it as soon as possible. But when you arrive at DC, you at the LDS Temple in DC, you will get to this walkway. There's like a bunch of trees. There's a bunch of there's like a garden and stuff, as you see in the video. And I'm walking with the group of people I went with, and there's James in there who's kind of explaining to us throughout this process of what we're looking at, what we can expect, because he's been there before, and he would um, presumably go there in the future as well and so it was it's a very beautiful walkway it's very lovely it's well manicured that's one thing about this place it's extremely well taken care of and you can see in the footage like they take care of the place it looks immaculate and so it was just a lovely walkway it felt very peaceful like very relaxing and there was a lot of people there um there was quite a bit of people there but at the same time 
it wasn't like like within that walkway it actually felt pretty open it felt pretty airy it, it felt nice it felt felt relaxing um but then um in the next clip you you, you see you're, we're approaching the temple and it's a very massive building um and, and the, the thing i think that stuck out to me was like it literally almost kind of reminded me not of the cinderella castle exactly in structure but it just gave me the sense of like oh it was just this giant massive temple that looked like a castle it was just it just gave you this idea of like this is luxurious this is beautiful and that's kind of the whole point um when i talked to james he was like yeah our goal with these temples is to glorify and honor god through um using the best of what we have to create a temple of worship for him so in the one clip the guy at the top of the temple who is like blowing on a trumpet is made out of, is one made out with real gold he um at least not the whole thing i don't think but he's at least plated in real gold which is really really cool to think about but also what's interesting is that's the prophet moroni and uh i wasn't entirely sure i don't think i got the full scoop of what the symbolism all meant but um, he was one of the major prophets in the book of mormon and so he moroni is up there blowing his trumpet over this this temple um, and so I thought that was just a really interesting fact that, that stuck out to me. I read a little bit of the Mormon, the Mormon Bible and, uh, the Book of Mormon, I mean. And so I had a little bit of familiarity, but I, I wasn't fully familiar with all their beliefs and their texts. So that was just interesting. Um, another thing that stuck out to me was, again, it was well manicured. The, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't ask now in hindsight, I should have asked. I wonder if the spring out front, that was the fountain out front, that was like sp spitting up water and just, it was very lovely. Um, I'm, I was really curious now if it had any sort of symbolism, because like almost everything inside the building had symbolism. We would ask questions here and there, um, but I didn't ask too much about the symbolism outside. I wish I would have now, but I, I, I have to wonder if that was supposed to represent like spring of life or, or something interesting like that. Um, but as you can tell, a very lovely place, very lovely building. And we had to go through the line thing, but it wasn't that many people there because we went, we got there pretty early. Um, we we got there at a good time, I mean, and so there wasn't much of a line, and we got through really quickly. And also, interestingly enough, I don't, I didn't have a video of this. Um, so when we when we arrived, when we showed up at the temple, we had to kind of go through this um, process. So we there there's like this entrance building that you go through. Um, so you go through this entrance building. And then you kind of you kind of go down these steps, or you kind of go down these steps, and they're carpeted steps. Um, and we're just walking in our own shoes. We're just kind of doing our thing while following the line, if you will. And so we are we're going down into this what well, we thought was the temple. We're like, oh, we're at the we're at the temple. But no, we actually went through a little entrance area and walked down another door into like kind of like this uh, open garden area with this little pathway, which led into the actual temple, the actual place of worship. And so at this point, we had to put on little booties over our shoes so we wouldn't, I guess, damage the uh, carpet and stuff, um, which I think they would have, they will update or like if any damage does happen, they'll update before they consecrate the temple um, once it once becomes only for LDS members. But it was just that they had people there, the, the members of the LDS church, presumably, um, putting booties on our shoes for us. We didn't have to put it on our own. They, they, they were putting it on for us, I think, for efficiency reasons. Um, but still, it was just very interesting, and we had these little booties on, and then we actually entered into the temple. Now, at this point, again, as I said, I wasn't allowed to take videos, I wasn't allowed to take photos, but I will um, show you on their website what was inside and kind of give you the scoop. So, let's go to it. Now, we've entered the temple. So, the first photo we're looking at here is, this is kind of like, almost like a register, registrar. So, if you can see here, so this is like the building before you got into the actual temple. Um, so they had like this little entrance way that you can go into. And then we, we went down those steps there in the left corner of the of the video, I mean of the photo. And we went down those steps and then it leads you to a door which leads into like a pathway that leads into the actual like worship temple center. Um, there's not much to expound upon here. Um, I, there were, there's a lot. Of, so like you'll see in the background here, there's a painting. There's a painting there of, uh, I think that's Jesus with two children. There's a tons and tons and tons of paintings and decorations and art and just um, all that throughout the whole temple. And actually, there's a theme to the temple. I believe the theme was, oh my word, now I'm forgetting. I think the theme was either something with heaven. I think it was some sort of heavenly theme or something with the tree of life. Um, I think it's one of those two. 
but I can't I can't say for sure which one it was. Um, but like normally temples are built with some sort of theme in mind. Um, but this was kind of like the almost like the registrar desk when you got in. You didn't have to check in or anything. You just went down the steps. But um, it's kind of that's kind of how you imagine it. Um, presumably, when the church gets consecrated, this is where LDS members will go and um, they might show their um, their card. Their so when LDS member LDS members, according to James, have to get um, permission from what we may know in the more like evangelical roots or whatever, like some sort of bishop or church leader. Um, they have to get permission from them and be like, okay, yes, you're a good LDS member or you're faithful or blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. So here's a two-year pass to the to visit a temple, um, any temple across the world. Um, and after two years, you have to get it renewed. Um, uh, something like that. You have to get it renewed every two years, I believe it was. Um, so this is where they would probably check your LDS membership and see if you're able to go into the temple to worship. And there could be many reasons that you're not able to get a uh, membership. Normally, one, if like your leader or your bishop or whatever the church leadership structure is of the LDS church um, says that, no, you're not worthy for whatever reason. Maybe it's because you haven't honored certain rules that they hold fast. I know they're not allowed to drink coffee. And if you'd be not a coffee drinker, that'd probably be a problem. Um, there's also issues of like sin. If you're living in sin or something, that'll be an issue. Um, if you're not a member, obviously, that'll be an issue. So, like, there's a few things that could prevent you from being recommended or getting a, um, a pass to the temple. And so, this next picture here, now, this is, so, we went through this hallway um, when we left the temple, actually. So, we weren't, uh, we didn't go through this that I, that I remember when we entered. This is actually what we, we went through this when we left. And according to uh, my resident uh, LDS member, um, this is supposed to represent kind of the transition from the holy to the uh, the uh, physical, kind of like the Im the immortal to mortal, you know, the transcendent into the uh, carnal or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of like a supposed to be a just like represent transitioning from the holy of holies to the physical. And um, I'm not entirely sure exactly how it represents that, um, but it's supposed to represent that <laughs> some sort of transition. Maybe it has something to do with all the windows um, that where it's kind of like this, um, kind of like this refreshing sunlight coming in. You're able to, you, you had a new revelation, a new sight, but now you have to enter into the world and deliver to the world this new revelation. And you're, like, your eyes have been opened. I don't know. I'm just really spitballing here. But that's what he says was to represent some sort of transitionary hallway. Um, and there's just a, another photo. And also, interestingly enough, so in the background there, you can see through the windows, there's a lot of trees and stuff. So um, behind this guard, behind this temple, or like almost like around the temple, basically, was like trees and like this. But there was like this garden area you could actually walk into and visit. Now we didn't go the visit. We didn't go to the temple. I mean, we didn't go to the garden area behind the temple. Uh, we went through that little entranceway, but we didn't um, go through the temple. There, you could have you could have perused the temple, be the temple garden. Uh, we didn't end up doing that then. But there is like this basically this garden um, behind surrounding kind of like the temple area that you can visit and walk around and there's pathways there. Um, so, but here, yeah, here is where we enter through. So you see this giant image of Jesus with a, uh, a bunch of like angels on the cloud there in the background. And this is kind of like the main lobby. You kind of walk in here and there's, this is kind of like the, the main lobby where you can just, you know, you would sit, you'd relax. Um, and there's just, as I said, there's just tons of paintings of Jesus. Um, and there's also a lot of mirrors too, which I think it has something to do with like reflecting. Um, you know, this idea of like, uh, take a deep look at yourself, reflect, you know, are you reflecting Christ? You know, I think it has something to do with kind of like that, that, um, that sort of idea. But this is just like a main lobby. When you first walk in, this is what you would see. Um, and then we took, I can't remember if we took a right or a left. Um, basically, if you take a right or a left, they'll still lead you to stairwell, to the two stairwells. There are stairwells on each side of the building, by what I remember. Um, so if you would take a left or a right, it took you to a stairwell. Uh, we didn't. I don't. We didn't have to see, look into every room, but we looked into pretty much most of the rooms. Um, so I think we took a left here, um, and yeah. And also, you'll notice that a lot of these paintings. There's a lot of like Native Americans. There's a lot of people from other ethnicities, um, and, and this is for multiple reasons. One, um, Mormon Mormonism when it started started uh, had had its most roots in like Utah, and uh, Joseph Smith really reached out to the Native American community when he was out there by what I understand. So he, there, there's a lot of Native Americans involved in this. And also Jesus, according to um, LDS um, theology and teachings, um, would have came to America at one point as well and would have had a ministry here. 
Um, I I don't know the full extent to that. I, that's something I want to research more as I as I delve into the Book of Mormon as I continue to study some of their theology. But um, he he would have came to America at one point according to them. And so there's a lot of Native Americans. There's a lot of um, people from other cultures. There's a lot. There's opinions of a lot of black people and stuff. And it's just I think it's supposed to also be kind of this idea of like the LDS is all about being one church. We're all of one church. We're all of one mind. We're all of one doctrine. Um, and so there's just this, there's this idea of like all cultures coming together. You kind of get this vibe through the paintings on the wall. And then, so we would have left the, we would have left the, um, main lobby and we would have went down that hallway. Now I can't remember if we went into any rooms right away in the main, that, that hallway leading to the stairwell, but we did go up the stairwell then. And I think it has a few pictures here within this, uh, that we'll get to with the stairwells. But what we're looking at right now is a some sort of like altar room. Um, there's a specific name for them. I'm blanking on it right now. But this is so right here in front of the uh, curtain, in front of the, uh, the the current thing there. This is actually supposed to be an altar. And so they would do. There were certain things that James said he couldn't tell us because um, there are certain things that you know they, the LDS members keep to themselves, and we didn't always ask all the questions that we could have. But this is where they would do some teachings. This is where they would do. Um, you know, some ritual stuff that they do within the church of LDS. Um, and so this is, this was supposed to represent the altar. It was supposed to be where people would sit and they would learn, they would gather information. They would, they would all that stuff. Um, and these would kind of be kind of like almost like ritual rooms is how I understood it to be. Um, but it's just, it's just also very interesting. As you notice, one thing that someone pointed out to me that I didn't think about right away, but once they pointed out, I, I noticed it. A lot of the lighting is indirect lighting, so pretty much all the lights are hanging from the ceiling, are chandeliers, uh, most of the lights on the walls are like, like reflecting, the light is reflecting off the walls, it's like um, just put inside the, the rim of uh, the edge of the wall. And so a lot of the lighting is just indirect. I think there might be some here direct lighting right, right there. Pause. So you may notice that I'm talking like the screen, I'm interacting with the screen. Well, I was thinking that my screen recorder was on, but it wasn't. And then in post edit, I realized it wasn't. So we're using screenshots now. Okay. Thank you. Bye. But most of it's indirect lighting, which is just very interesting. It's very white, very white. So the light just reflects and it's very, very well lit. Um, now this was a room that we looked at. Um, I honestly didn't spend too much time in this room. Um, it's the bride's room. So that would explain probably why I didn't have too much interest in this room. Um, but this is where um, they have so so within LDS um, within the LDS church within their sort of theology if you get you have to get married in a temple to have what they call eternal marriage um, so they believe that marriage and family will go with you into the afterlife um, to it depending on circumstances depending on how you get married depending on um, your standing with God all that stuff um, but they believe the marriage can be internal and you can only have an eternal marriage by what I understand when you get married in a temple. Um, so there's tons and tons of marriages that happen within these LDS temples. Um, DC, not the only one. There's a, there's a bunch in Utah. There's, some, there's one in Philly, I think. So whenever you get married in a temple, your marriage becomes eternal unless uh, other stipulations apply. Um, but this is where brides would get ready for their wedding. This is where they would get dressed. This is where I guess all the bridesmaids would come along and come around and gush over the bride. Um, and there's just a lot of mirrors. It's a very beautiful mirror. And, Gold and white again, and I think I like I like the the floral designing on the ground. It just really add, and like notice how the flowers are white, um, which I assume also represents like this idea of purity and innocence. Um, so there's just a lot of beauty going on here. But this is where brides would get ready for the weddings, and it's just very interesting. Um, here, okay, so I learned something new. Uh, I learned a lot of things new when I visited the temple. Um, but this is the baptism room. So this is where people get baptized. Um, so first thing I want to point out is at the bottom here of this basin, you'll see that there's 12 oxen. Uh, well, you might not be able to see the 12 oxen because some of the oxen are, um, in the, in the back there of the, of the, the, the basin, but there's 12 oxen there, which are supposed to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, for anyone not familiar with the Judeo Christian, um, Bible and teachings, um, the 12 tribes of Israel, just the, the 12 sons of Isaac. Well, the 12 sons of Israel, but also known as Isaac. Anyway, so 
This is the 12 tribes, this book represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And they are bearing the, the basin, the, uh, the baptismal basin, which um, I can't remember exactly why, um, but they are. And then also you'll notice that there's this, a lot of these, this moral and this painting of Jesus getting baptized. And then, so that's supposed to be Jesus getting baptized by John the Baptist in the background. Um, and something that they do here. So obviously people get baptized within the Church of Latter-day Saints. Um, but people will also get baptized not on the behalf of just themselves, but they'll get baptized on the behalf of the dead. So um, James told me that um, people will get baptized here on a regular basis um, for the for the dead. So they'll be they'll get baptized for their ancestors. They'll get baptized for people who weren't able to get baptized in the past because of persecution or because they died before they were able to or whatever the case may be. They'll just they'll get baptized on their behalf. And now in heaven or wherever they are in the afterlife, exactly. Um, they would have to accept or embrace that um, baptism for themselves. But people get baptized for others here. And so some people get baptized multiple times, but not for themselves, for, for the dead. Um, and again, this is like marble and just this indirect lighting, beautiful chandelier. It's just, the, it's, the place is just lovely. The place is just lovely to look at. Um, here's an up close shot of the oxen. So you can see what I'm talking about there with, with that. So here is actually... Uh, when you go up the steps of, of this of this temple, there are these um, tinted windows, um, stained glass windows. That's the word I'm looking for. So there's these stained glass windows that go up to like the top of those sp spires or close to it. And so the, this is like kind of like the lighting you'll see when you're going up the going up the steps, and it kind of gives you almost like a traditional um, Eastern Orthodox Catholic vibe through these stained glass windows. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool looking. Again, here's another like lobby area. This is where elevators are, and this you can see the stairs there. Uh, nothing too much to expound upon here. Um, you see more paintings. It's just paintings everywhere. Um, there's the stairs again. So those are the steps we had to go up and down. Uh, we didn't use the elevator at all, so we got our exercise in for the day. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I think the tour took about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. So quite a bit of walking. Uh, oh, so this room was very, very, uh, very nice. Um, this is like a quiet room. So this is kind of like a, a room where you would spend time praying. You would spend time meditating. You would spend time reading the word of God. Um, you would be musing. So like if you went into one of those ritual rooms or one of those teaching rooms, you'd be spending time there thinking about what you learned and you'd be just meditating a lot. So this is supposed to be like a quiet meditative room where you just reflect on what God's been teaching you. And again, notice the mirrors. Notice the mirrors like all around this room. I think it has, again, goes with the idea of reflecting. You reflect on yourself, reflect on what God's doing, reflect on the word. You reflect. You're constantly reflecting. Um, and as you see, there's a lot of chairs, a lot of light. And again, giant chandelier, man. It's just it's just a really nice room. It was very, very lovely. Um, there it is again. And again, look, that's a, it, they were big mirrors. Like, and also what's interesting, by, by the time we got into this room, quite a few people were already uh, in this walkthrough here. So like the carpet was trampled down. Not trampled down, but you can see like uh, people were walking there. So it's just the carpet was the carpet. I think would be replaced once we left, but still we had booties on to help protect it as much as possible. Um, but again, it was a very lovely room. So this is one of the rooms we weren't able to visit, sadly. Um, this was at like the top of the temple, so we weren't allowed to go to the full, full top of the temple. But this would be one of the rooms at the top of the temple where it's supposed to actually be a replica of like the first temple ever built. Now the first temple ever built by the LDS church. Uh, I think Joseph Smith was involved in that one um, back in the 1800s. Actually got taken over and stolen by, from the Church of LDS due to persecution reasons and um, due to political reasons and stuff like that. Um, so that original temple no longer belonged to the LDS church. Um, it was taken from them. And I can't remember how, if it was like destroyed and rebuilt or how it was, but I, they were kicked out of it. They, persecution. The LDS church was not well appreciated in the 1800s. Um, so they made a replica of it at like the top of this giant temple. Um, and so it's uh, that's how kind of like the original would have looked like. Now probably not necessarily the same material and maybe not as shiny and as the lighting would have been different because it was 1800s. Um, but still, it's supposed to be a replica of how it was designed. Um, but we didn't get to visit it. Uh, they, they blocked off the top of the temple from us when we visited Oh, yes. Um, I don't want to skip over this one. 
So this is a marriage room. So I don't think this is where they would like necessarily hold a full ceremony um, by what I understood when I talked to James. Um, but this is where a, a, a couple will go to either like renew vows or to say their vows privately in front of a small congregation of people, um, probably family members, stuff like that. Um, and notice that, well, one, the rooms are like circular, which I think again, is supposed to represent this idea of kind of like a ring, like it never ends. But also, interestingly enough, there's, it's hard to see, but there's two mirrors on each side of these marriage rooms, of these, these rooms where these couples will come together um, to make their marriage eternal or eternal vows. Because the mirrors on each side reflect against each other. So if you look at the one mirror, kind of like, I mean, I'm sure you've done this before if you're at least have, have enough mirrors around. But you look at the one mirror and you'll see your reflection keep going, 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 and you can't really see the end of it. And that's how it's supposed to represent kind of like eternity. So the, the room is supposed to represent eternity. You're supposed to look at these mirrors and notice um, that a long line of ancestors led up to you. A long line of ancestors will come from you. Um, and it never ends. It represents eternity. Your marriage will be eternal. It's supposed to be like this whole idea of eternity. Ancestors before you who led to you. Ancestors after you. And your marriage itself, like being eternal, never ends. Um, so I just thought that was very, very interesting. So that is the uh, LDS temple in Washington, D.C., um, and that pretty much covers pretty much all the rooms that we saw. Um, the, the, that covers the main ones. Uh, there's not anything off the top of my head that I can recall um, that would have been much different. They did have water fountains in the in the temple, which was which was nice, um, and also had bathrooms. Um, but they didn't show any bathrooms, sadly. Um, but they were all very lovely, lovely facilities. Um, so yeah, that is just the LDS temple in a nutshell. That's the inside of the LDS temple, at least. Um, and I, I showed you some of the footage outside and you can kind of look for yourself as well at the more of the footage outside. I mean, you can even see on this, this screenplay here, the, how, it's just a massive building. It's very lovely though. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're still able to visit, I would definitely go visit, uh, but that'll be cl closing here soon. Um, but it's definitely a lovely place. It was a great place to visit. I had a lot of fun and talking to James, it just, I learned a lot about the LDS church and I hope to learn more as I continue to study it myself. Um, through reading and through uh, through videos and stuff like that and podcasts so yeah now thank you for joining me on this little tour and hopefully you guys learned a lot hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well um and so i hope you guys um continue to learn more yourselves and hopefully you learn something from here and i want you guys to go out there and continue to broaden your horizons uh, it's not my podcast i'm so used to saying go out there friends and like the world but this isn't my podcast i don't need to end like that i can end this video however i want so <laughs> so i just want you guys to enjoy yourselves and continue to learn and grow hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys enjoy this type of content definitely like and leave a comment and just tell me what your thoughts are on the temple and let me know what you what you think of it and if you have any if you visited any places that are really cool and you would like to share with share in the comments below um and definitely subscribe and follow along if you enjoy what you heard and check out my other stuff at ltworld.info you can check out my podcast i like the world podcast um so yeah thank you guys for joining me and hope you guys have a great rest of your day